Hi guys, it's me, Professor Dean, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be going over patient positioning. Before we get started, as always, I'm going to ask you to please support me and support this channel by liking this video. You're going to love it, so go ahead and give it a thumbs up now. Subscribing to my channel if you haven't done so already. And don't forget, I'm now offering Next Generation NCLEX reviews. It's a two-part session, and you can reserve your spot by going onto my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. If you're a current nursing student and you're just struggling to get through the program, well, I have something for you. I have audio lessons. You can find those on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Almost daily, you can find me covering a variety of nursing topics across my social media platforms, such as TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. My handle's the same everywhere, Nexus Nursing, so be sure to check me out. Before we get started, I want to start off with a prayer. If you're not into that, just fast forward. And if you are, close your eyes by your head. Make sure you're not operating heavy machinery. Father God, Lord, thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for the breath of life in our body, Father God. Thank you for another opportunity to go over uh, complex ideas, Lord. I ask that you please help every single viewer that has come to the channel for whatever purpose. Help them to understand this information, Lord. I pray for all of the students who are buckling down and studying for those final exams, Father God, those students who are getting ready to go back to their uh, family for the holidays, Lord. I ask that you please help them to do well on those final exams, those exit exams. And the students who are going to be starting the program, who are going to be brand new nursing students in January, Lord, I ask that you please help them start on the right foot, help them with their studying habits and the discipline and all the uh, people in their lives that are distractions, that don't even mean them any good, Lord, I ask that you weed them out now. Help them to be successful in their studies, Lord, and please help me to be able to explain this information in a way that the students can understand and they can remember. Thank you for all you've done for us and all you continue to do in our lives. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right, guys, let's get started. First question. The nurse is caring for a client who's one day post-operative for a total hip replacement. Which is the best position in which the nurse should place the client? One, sideline on the operative side. Two, on the non-operative side with the legs abducted. Three, sideline with the affected leg internally rotated. Or four, sideline with the affected leg externally rotated. And guys, the correct answer is two on the non-operative side with the legs abducted. All right, guys, so this should be a gimme. The patient had surgery. You don't want them lying down on that surgical site. You don't want to disturb that surgical site. So you want them on the non-operative site, all right? You want them on the non-operative site, and you want to make sure that that femur head is not dislocated from the pocket, so you're not going to have them adducted, no, not ADD. You want it abducted away from the midline, and that's choice number two. One, side lying on the operative side, absolutely not. Two, internally rotated, externally, ro externally rotated, no. We want um, the legs to be abducted, however, in a neutral straight position. We don't want internal or external rotation. That's why two is the correct answer choice. A nurse is providing instructions to a client and the family regarding hair regarding home care after right eye cataract removal. Which statement by the client would indicate an understanding of the instructions? One, I will not sleep on my left side. Two, I will not sleep on my right side. Three, I will not sleep with my head elevated. Or four, I will not wear my glasses until my physician says it's okay. And guys, the correct answer is two, I will not sleep on my right side or my right eye. Well, right side, I guess. But the whole point is you don't want to put pressure on that operative side. If you go back to the question, it says that the patient had right eye cataract removal, so you don't want them lying down on the right side. Remember, cataract, that's that that cloudiness, that opacity of the lens, okay? So the patient's getting that removed. You don't want pressure on that side. All of the other um, answers are correct or incorrect, I should say. One, I will not sleep on my left side. Think about it. This patient's having cataract removed from their right eye. We don't want them to sleep on their right side. So that patient's say, patient saying, I will not sleep on my left side. What side are you going to sleep on? Right? Because we don't want you on your right side. So that's not showing an understanding. Uh, three, I will not uh, sleep with my head elevated. I will not sleep with my head elevated. Well, that's a problem. We do want your head elevated because when you sleep with your head elevated, that elevation helps decrease the edema and that edema helps decrease what? Intraocular pressure. You want to um, 
encourage drainage. You want to decrease the pressure. So that's wrong. And then choice four, I will not wear my glasses until my physician says it's okay. What are you talking about? Of course you should. So the only one that shows correct understanding is going to be two saying, I will not sleep on my right side. I will not sleep on the side that I just had the surgical procedure on. A nurse assists a physician in performing a liver biopsy. After the biopsy, the nurse places a client in which position? One, prone, two, supine, three, sideline position with a small pillow folded under the folded towel under the puncture site, or four, a right side a right sideline position with a small pillow or folded towel under the puncture site. And the correct answer is four right sideline position with a pillow or folded towel under the puncture site. So just think about it. Where is your liver located? It's located on your right side. By the way, guys, the liver is a very bloody organ. Organ. Just think about where your clotting factors are made, okay? Your liver is a very bloody organ. It's on the right side. So you're going to want to put pressure on that very bloody organ where those clotting factors are made to decrease um, the chance of hemorrhage. You want to, <coughs> excuse me, guys. You want to make sure you have pressure on that site for at least three hours. A nurse is administering a cleansing enema to a client with a fecal impaction. Before administering the enema, the nurse places the client in which position? One, left sense position. Two, right sense position. Three, on the left side of the body with the head of the bed elevated 45 degrees. Or four, on the right side of the body with the head elevated 45 degrees. And guys, the correct answer is one, left sense position. And the reason you want that patient to be in a left sense position is in, in that position, naturally gravity is going to help um, that flow to go directly into the colon. It's not going to be fighting against any pressure. Gravity naturally is going to flow because the patient's on that left side. So left sense position's the correct, not on the right side, not right sense. Look at number three on the left side. Okay, I'm with it so far, but look, it says with the head of the bed elevated 45 degrees. We don't want the head of the bed elevated. And then choice four on the right side, wrong. We want the patient on the left side, left limbs, and the head of the bed's going to be down. A client's being prepared for thoracentesis. A nurse assists the client in which position for the procedure? One, lying in bed on the affected side. Two, lying in bed on the unaffected side. Three, Sims position with the head of the bed flat or four, prone with the head turned to the side and supported by a pillow. And the correct answer is two, lying in the bed on the unaffected side. And the reason you don't want the patient on the, on the affected side, okay, if they're lying down on the affected side, how are we going to get all that fluid out of the chest wall, right? So you want them lying down on the unaffected side. Now, they can lie down on the unaffected side so we can get the fluid out. Or usually, typically how it's done, the patient's sitting on the edge of the bed and they're leaning over that overhead over bed table or overhead table? Over bed table. They're leaning over that over bed table and it just allows um, uh, perfect... Um, position for you to, not you, but for the healthcare provider to be able to get all of that fluid out of the chest wall. So either it's either them sitting up on the edge of the bed, leaning over that overbed table or them lying down on bed, but they're not going to be lying down on the affected side. They're going to be lying down on the unaffected side. So the affected side will be open and the um, healthcare provider can actually drain that chest wall. A nurse is preparing to insert a nasogastric tube into a client. The nurse places the client in which position for insertion? One, right side. Two, low fowlers. Three, high fowlers. Or four, supine with the head flat. What do you guys say? And guys, the correct answer is four, high fowlers. The reason you want the patient sitting all the way up is that if they were to vomit, right? The risk of aspiration is less. That's why you want them sitting up. You want to decrease um, the risk of aspiration. A client's diagnosed with deep vein thrombophlebitis. A nurse develops a plan of care for the client and includes which position or activity in the plan. One, out-of-bed activities as desired. 
Two, bed rest with affected extremity kept flat. Three, bed rest with the elevation of the affected extremity. Or four, bed rest with affected extremity in a dependent position. And the correct answer is three, bed rest with elevation of the affected extremity affected extremity. So think about it. This patient has DVT. The, we're going to want to have that leg elevated because it's going to promote um, venous flow. So we want blood going back to the heart. And on top of that, because that leg's elevated, it's going to decrease pressure. It's going to decrease pain. It's going to decrease swelling. Okay. So you want that leg to be elevated. Now let's look at the wrong answer chain choices. One, out of bed activities as desired. Let's think about this. We go back to the question, it says the patient has a DVT. Do we really want that patient moving around, getting out of bed? Do we really want to encourage a chance that that DVT breaks off and turns into an embolism? So now it's floating in the bloodstream and God forbid it goes right to the pulmonary artery. And before you know it, your patient has a pul pulmonary embolism. No, we don't want that. So that patient's definitely going to be on bed rest. Okay. Um, choice two, bed rest, that part's okay, but look, it says with the affected extremity kept flat. Again, guys, we want to force blood back to the heart. So we want that leg elevated. It's going to encourage, it, that encourages, um, venous circulation. It decreases, uh, the edema. It decreases the pain. It decreases the swelling, um, decreases the venous pressure. We want that leg to be elevated. So that's wrong. And then choice four, bed rest with the affected, bed rest, that part's good, but let's keep going. With the affected extremity in a dependent position, what happens when you put that leg or that extremity in a dependent position? You're bringing more blood, more fluids to that area, which means you're increasing the pain. You're increasing the swelling. You're, you're increasing um, that edema. You're um, increasing the venous pressure. That's the opposite of what we want. So what we're gonna do is choice three. A client has just returned to a nursing unit after an above the knee amputation of the right leg. A nurse places the client in which position? One, prone. Two, reverse Trendelenburg. Three, supine with that amputated limb flat on the bed. Or four, supine with the amputated limb supported with pillows. And this isn't even a question, guys. Four is the correct answer. So after patient has had an amputation of an extremity, the first 24 hours, what we're going to be most concerned about, I mean, besides hemorrhage, of course, we're going to be concerned about swelling. So um, you're going to have that patient supine, but look, with the amputated limb supported on pillows. Why? We're trying to increase venous return. Now, after 24 hours, then periodically we can put the patient prone so we can make sure that, you know, contractures don't develop. But within that first 24 hours, we're concerned about that swelling. We're going to have them supine with um, that extremity uh, supported on pillows. We're trying to increase venous return. A nurse is caring for a client with a severe burn who's scheduled for an autograph to be placed on the lower extremity. The nurse develops a post-operative plan of care for the client and includes which of the following in the plan. One, maintain the client in a prone position. Two, elevate and immobilize the grafted extremity. Three, maintain the surgical extremity in a flat position. Or four, keep the surgical extremity covered with a blanket. And the correct answer is to elevate and immobilize the grafted extremity. This is going to be done for like three to seven days after that surgical procedure. And the reason is um, we want to allow time for it to adhere, for it to actually stick to the wound site. Okay, so number two is the correct answer choice. A nurse is preparing to care for a client who has returned to the nursing unit following cardiac catheterization performed through the femoral artery. The nurse plans to allow which client position or activity following the procedure. One, bed rest in high follows position. Two, bed rest with bathroom privileges only. Three, bed rest with the head of the bed elevated 60 degrees. Or four, bed rest with head elevation no greater than 30 degrees.
And guys, the correct answer is four. Bed rest with head elevation no greater than 30 degrees. Go back to the question. Let's go back. I want you to see that, yes, the patient got a cardiac cath, but look how it was performed through the femoral artery. So the femoral artery, so that affected leg has to stay straight for a good four to six hours and the patient has to be on bed rest. Okay, and so that's why um, choice four is a correct answer. We're gonna want that affected leg to stay straight. We're gonna want that patient to be on bed rest. And here's a key look, head of bed elevated no greater than 30 degrees. Why no greater than 30 degrees? We don't want any flexion in that um, area where that femoral artery is. We want to keep that leg straight. We don't want any flexion in that area. That's why four is the correct answer. Look at the other choices. One, bed rest, which is good. But look, in high Fowler's position, if you're sitting up straight, guess what? There's that flexion in that hip area, right? We want that femoral artery, that area to be straight. Choice two, bed rest with bathroom privileges. Well, what do you do in the bathroom? Sit on the toilet. Same concept. Choice three, bed rest with head elevated. If it's elevated higher than 60 degrees, there's a chance of what? That flexion that we want to avoid. That's why number four is the correct answer choice. The nurse is caring for a client following a supra... I'm sorry, guys. I can't even see. A supra... Tentorial? I don't even know what that is. Supratentorial craniotomy. Okay, so I know it's a part of the brain we're removing. I just don't know which part. But anyway, craniotomy. Oh, it didn't say ectomy, so we're not removing. We're just going in. Excuse me. It says otomy, not ectomy. Excuse me. Craniotomy in which a large tumor oh, was removed from the left side of the brain. I was right the first time. Okay, so we did a craniotomy. We went in, but we also removed a portion of the brain. All right. The portion, the tumor that was removed was on the left side. Select the positions in which the nurse can safely place the patient. Okay, guys, this is select all that applies. How do we treat select all that applies? We treat them as true or false. Let's go. One, on the left side. False. If you go back to the question, the part of the tumor that was removed was the left side. Do we ever want to place the patient on the surgical site? Do we ever want to disrupt that surgical um, area? Absolutely not. So that's false. We're not going to choose that. Two, with the neck flexed. Never. Think about it. Patient just had brain surgery. Brain surgery, you're going to be concerned about increased intracranial pressure. So you are not going to do anything that can increase intracranial pressure. You are not going to flex. You're not going to hyperextend. You're not going to rotate. You're not doing any of this. The patient's head needs to be midline in a neutral position. Okay? So that's false. Um, choice three supine on the left side. We talked about this already. You know why that's false. Absolutely not. Choice four, with extra... First of all, it didn't even say with hip flexion. It said with extreme hip flexion. Guys, when the patient has had surgery up here, we don't want any type of flexion of the neck, any of this, or the hip. Both of those can increase intracranial pressure. So even if that word extreme wasn't there and it just said hip flexion, we still wouldn't have chosen. They put that word extreme in there as a red flag to you. So I hope you pick that up. So absolutely not. We don't want that. Choice five, in a semi-fowler's position. Yes, we can do that because a semi-fowler's position, that head is elevated no more than 30 degrees. So that's perfect. We want to do that to promote venous drainage. That's perfect. Choice six, with the head in a midline position. True. We want the head midline neutral position. No rotation, no extension, no flexion. So the correct answer choices are number five and number six. All right, guys, that is um, it for those type of questions. I want to go over devices that are used for patient positioning. So I'm going to talk about different scenarios, what you would use a particular device for. And I want to see if you can, you know, figure it out, if you can think of what it is that I'm talking about. So the first one. We're going to use this to provide support to the patient. It's going to help to elevate body parts. You can use it to splint you know, incisions, if the patient has an incision that they have to splint. So, you know, when they cough or sneeze, right? 
It helps to reduce pain during activity, cough, deep breathing. And the patient should never um, be, they should be, okay, I'm sorry. What I'm talking to you about, it should be of the appropriate size for the body that is positioned. So I'm gonna even give you a hint. Let's say your patient has a liver biopsy. You may use this to apply pressure. What could it be? A pillow, right? That would be a perfect example. A pillow helps to provide support. It elevates body parts. You can use a pillow to help splint if the patient has to cough or sneeze or even deep breathe, but it's, it may be painful for them to deep breathe. You can use a pillow. All right, let's talk about something else. How about... This item that I'm thinking about is made of rigid plastic or heavy foam, and it keeps the foot flexed at the proper angle. It should be removed two to three times a day to assess the skin integrity and joint mobility. What am I talking about? I'll repeat that. <coughs> Excuse me. It's made of rigid plastic or heavy foam. It's used to keep the foot flexed at the proper angle. And it should be removed two or three times a day to assess the patient's skin and also to assess for joint mobility. What am I talking about? Foot boots. Foot boots. Next. All right. This is individually molded for the client to maintain proper alignment of the thumb and slight adduction and wrist and slight dorsiflexion. So I'm talking about something that's molded for the patient to maintain proper alignment of their thumb. The thumb is going to be an adduction. Remember, there's adduction and abduction. Add together, ab away, okay? So I'm talking about adduction, all right, okay? So it helps to keep the thumb in slight adduction and it keeps the wrist in slight dorsiflexion. What am I talking about? I'll even give you a hint. So a patient who has something like carpal tunnel syndrome, you'd expect for this to be ordered for them. What am I talking about? Wrist splints or hand wrist splints. Next. This is something that descends from a securely fastened overhead bar attached to the bed frame. It allows the patient to use the upper extremities to raise the trunk off the bed it assists in transferring from the bed to a wheelchair and it helps the patient to perform upper arm strengthening exercises. What am I talking about? I'll repeat it again. It descends from a securely fastened overhead bar attached to the bed frame. It allows the patient to use the upper extremities to raise the trunk off the bed. It assists in transferring from bed to a wheelchair and it helps the patient to perform upper arm strengthening exercises. What are we talking about? Trapeze bar. Trapeze bar. Okay, guys, one last one. <coughs> Excuse me. What I'm talking about is triangular. It's made of heavy foam and it's used to maintain the, le the legs in an abduction following a total hip replacement. I'll give you a hint. This can also be used to keep a pregnant woman on her left side to increase perfusion to herself in the fetus and the fetus. So let me repeat this. What I'm talking about is triangular. It's made of heavy foam and it's used to maintain the legs in abduction away from midline. Okay. Abduction following a total hip replacement. It can also be used for the pregnant woman to keep her on her left side to increase perfusion. What would I be talking about? And the correct answer is a wedge pillow. The wedge pillow is in that triangular shape. And guys, that is it for this video on patient positioning. Please let me know what you thought about this video. Please let me know if you'd like to see more questions on this topic, if you'd like me to go in depth, and how you'd like to see these this information, would you like it in a lecture where I'm teaching out of a book? Would you like it in an activity format such as a Kahoot or in a question answer format such as this video you're watching right now? Don't forget guys, you guys can find me on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. My handle's the same, Nexus Nursing. And you can also sign up for one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions, NCLEX reviews, or audio lessons by going to my website, 
nexusnursinginstitute.com. Thank you so much for watching this video. You guys will catch me on the next video.